3 i Atlas. It's currently making its way through our solar system, and we've been tracking its progress very closely. Let me show you three numbers that have scientists scrambling for answers. Number one, 3 i Atlas is accelerating at 84 miles per day, squared away from the sun with no gravitational cause. Number two, if this comes from outgassing, the object needs to eject 3.3 billion tons of material in one month. That's 10% of its entire mass. Number three, the probability of all the observed anomalies occurring together by random chance is less than one in 10 quadrillion. These aren't theories or speculation. These are measurements from Stereo A, SOHO, and GOES-19 spacecraft. And in December 2025, when the Hubble and James Webb telescopes point at this object, we'll know if we're looking at exotic chemistry or something else entirely. October 29, 2025 was perihelion, the closest approach at 126 million miles or 1.36 astronomical unit from the sun. It's also aligned in its path with the a plane of the planets around the sun. It's quite intriguing, it offers us a gift, a rare gift. At that distance, the object 3i Atlas was receiving about 735 watts of solar energy per square meter, compared to less than 0.00001 of a watt per square meter in deep interstellar space. That's a massive energy increase, and it's at this exact moment that things got really strange. Several spacecraft watched 3i Atlas during this phase, Stereo A, SOHO, and GOES-19. They all recorded dramatic brightening that exceeded what's typical for comets at that distance. NASA space telescopes have made unique observations, and scientists are poring over the data. The comet's path will take it past even more of our robotic explorers. The brightness scaled with distance to the sun raised to the power of negative 7.5. That's a steeper relationship than normally observed, but the brightening was just the beginning. That's when Davide Farnocchia at JPL analyzed the positional measurements and discovered clear non-gravitational acceleration. The acceleration has two distinct components working simultaneously. First, there's a radial component. The object is being pushed away from the sun at a rate of 84 miles per day squared. Think of it like someone hitting the gas pedal, but the acceleration is pointing directly away from the sun. Second, there's a transverse component. The object is also accelerating perpendicular to the sun's direction at about 37 miles per day squared. It's not just moving faster in one direction, it's accelerating in two directions at once. Now, when comets accelerate without gravity being the cause, it's usually the rocket effect. Here's how that works. As ice on the comet's surface heats up and turns into gas, that gas jets away from the surface at high speed. Through conservation of momentum, Newton's third law, every action has an equal and opposite reaction. Those gas jets push the nucleus in the opposite direction. It's exactly like a rocket engine, just powered by sublimating ice instead of burning fuel. So the question becomes, can the rocket effect from outgassing explain what we're seeing with 3i Atlas? A.V. Loeb did the math, and here's where it gets interesting. If outgassing is causing this acceleration, we can calculate how much mass the object needs to lose. The calculation involves the ejection speed of the gas for thermal sublimation, that's typically a few hundred meters per second, and the measured acceleration. The result? 3 I Atlas would lose half its mass over a period equal to the ejection speed divided by the acceleration. For thermal ejection speeds, that works out to an evaporation half-life of about six months. Now, 3 I Atlas doesn't spend six months at perihelion. It takes roughly one month to cross through the perihelion distance scale of 126 million miles. During that one month of intense solar heating, the object would lose approximately one-tenth of its total mass. That's 10% of the entire object blown off into space. With an estimated mass of at least 33 billion tons, we're talking about ejecting roughly 3.3 billion tons of material in just one month. That's not a gentle puff of gas, that's a massive eruption. And here's the critical point. If that much material was ejected, it doesn't just disappear. It forms a huge, dense cloud of gas and dust surrounding the object. This cloud should be easily detectable when 3i Atlas becomes visible again from Earth. The JUICE spacecraft from the European Space Agency will have the first opportunity to observe 3i Atlas in early November 2025. 
ground-based telescopes will get their best viewing opportunity on December 19, 2025, when the object passes within 167 million miles of Earth. The International Asteroid Warning Network has organized coordinated observations running from November 27, 2025 through January 27, 2026. So, we have a clear, testable prediction. If the non-gravitational acceleration comes from outgassing, there should be a massive gas cloud surrounding 3I Atlas. If that cloud is there, case closed. But what if the cloud isn't there? What if we look at 3I Atlas in November and December and see a relatively clean, compact object without that predicted massive plume? That's when we have a serious problem because it would mean the acceleration isn't coming from outgassing. And if it's not outgassing, where is it coming from? This exact scenario has happened before, and it's why this story is so compelling. Back in 2017, astronomers discovered Oumuamua, the first confirmed interstellar object passing through our solar system. As they tracked Oumuamua's trajectory, they noticed it was also showing non-gravitational acceleration, just like 3I Atlas. So they looked for the telltale signs of cometary activity. NASA's Spitzer Space Telescope, one of the most sensitive infrared observatories we have, searched for the heat signature and dust that should accompany outgassing. The result? Nothing. Zero detectable gas. Zero detectable dust. No cometary activity whatsoever. Umamua was accelerating, but there was no visible cause for that acceleration. This led astronomers to coin a new term, dark comet a comet that shows non-gravitational acceleration, but no visible tail or coma. But here's the thing, a comet is defined by its tail. That's what makes it a comet. Calling something a dark comet is like calling something an invisible light. It's an oxymoron. The term exists because we needed a way to classify an object that was behaving like a comet, but didn't look like one. That's when Avi Loeb proposed an alternative explanation. What if Oumuamua wasn't a comet at all? What if it was an artificial object, possibly a light sail, a thin reflective sheet pushed by radiation pressure from the sun? A light sail would show non-gravitational acceleration without any outgassing. The idea was controversial. Most astronomers argued Oumuamua was probably just made of materials we hadn't encountered before, something that could accelerate without producing detectable gas. But the debate highlighted a fundamental question. How do we distinguish between exotic natural phenomena and potential artificial objects? Now we're facing the same situation with 3I Atlas, but with some key differences. First, 3I Atlas is much larger, roughly 3.5 miles across compared to Umamua's estimated 1,300 feet. Second, we have better observation opportunities. Umamua was discovered on its way out of the solar system, so we only got a brief look. With 3I Atlas, we've been tracking it for months and we'll continue observing it through early 2026. But there's another detail that makes the 3I Atlas case even more intriguing. The object got bluer as it approached perihelion. This is backwards from what you'd expect. Dust scatters light and makes objects appear redder. That's why sunsets are red. Additionally, the surface temperature of 3I Atlas should be much cooler than the sun's 5,800 Kelvin photosphere, which would also shift its color toward red. Yet observations from multiple spacecraft showed 3I Atlas becoming bluer than the sun itself. One natural explanation is ionized carbon monoxide in the coma, which can emit blue light. But there's another possibility that Loeb has suggested. What if the blue color comes from a heat source hotter than expected from solar heating alone? What if it's coming from an internal engine? If 3I Atlas has some kind of propulsion system, whether natural or artificial, that could explain both the non-gravitational acceleration and the unusual blue coloration. A hot engine or power source could produce both effects. Now I want to be clear, this is speculative. We don't have proof of an internal engine. But the point is that the data we're collecting doesn't fit neatly into our standard comet model. And scientists need to consider all possibilities that match the observations. Let me give you some context about what we're dealing with. Astronomers have tracked 3I Atlas backward through space for more than 10 million years. During that journey, it passed within detectable range of 93 different stars, though detectable range here means it never got closer than 0.3 light years to any of them. 
That's about 63,000 times the distance from Earth to the Sun. Scientists think this object might be 7.6 billion years old, which would make it nearly double Earth's age. Now let's talk about what happened as 3i Atlas approached the Sun, because the object showed unusual behavior long before perihelion. Typical comets from our solar system start showing visible activity, what astronomers call forming a coma, somewhere between 280 and 370 million miles from the Sun. That's the distance where water ice gets warm enough to turn directly into gas. But 3i Atlas started showing a coma when it was still beyond 465 million miles out, where it's far too cold for water ice to sublimate. Scientists pointed spectrometers at that early coma to see what was coming off the object. The results showed carbon dioxide as the dominant gas, with a ratio of roughly 8 parts CO2 to 1 part water. Normal solar system comets show the opposite ratio, they're water dominated. Carbon dioxide does sublimate at lower temperatures than water, but it tells us this object formed under very different conditions than comets in our solar system. There's one more piece of this puzzle that's worth mentioning. The timing of 3i Atlas's perihelion coincided with some of the most intense solar activity in decades. The far side of the Sun erupted with massive coronal mass ejections, huge explosions that hurled billions of tons of charged particles into space. Several of these solar storms hit or grazed 3i Atlas. This is interesting because we see similar patterns with Mercury. When Mercury aligns with the Sun in what's called a superior conjunction, Solar activity often increases. Mercury has a strong magnetic field, and researchers think there might be electromagnetic interactions between Mercury and the Sun that trigger solar storms. Could 3i Atlas, with its substantial mass and unusual composition, be interacting with the Sun's magnetic field in similar ways? Could it be triggering or amplifying solar activity? Does it charge itself from the Sun, using it as a fuel station? It's speculative, but the correlation between 3i Atlas's perihelion and the solar storm outbreak is hard to ignore. Now, there's been some controversy around getting access to critical data that could help answer these questions. NASA's Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter captured images of 3i Atlas using its high-rise camera on October 2nd to 3rd, 2025, when the object passed within 18.6 million miles of Mars. These images have a spatial resolution of about 18.6 miles per pixel, roughly three times better than the best publicly available Hubble image from July 21st. The problem? Those high-rise images haven't been released yet. The delay was initially attributed to the government shutdown on October 1st, 2025, but weeks later the scientific community still doesn't have access to this time-sensitive data. Congresswoman Anna Polina Luna has gotten involved, writing a formal letter to NASA's acting administrator Sean Duffy requesting the release of these images. The high-rise data is important because it was captured at a critical moment, after 3i Atlas had started showing unusual behavior but before perihelion. Those images could show us the state of the object's surface, the structure of its coma, and potentially reveal details about how it's shedding material. All of that is crucial for understanding whether the non-gravitational acceleration matches what we'd expect from a natural comet. So where does all this leave us? We have an object showing clear non-gravitational acceleration at perihelion. We have two possible explanations. Either it's outgassing like a comet, or something else is causing the acceleration. The outgassing explanation makes a specific, testable prediction. There should be a massive gas cloud visible in November and December. The alternative explanation, whether it's exotic materials we don't understand or something more unusual, predicts we won't see that massive cloud. Within the next few weeks, we'll have our answer. When 3i Atlas emerges from behind the sun, the Hubble and James Webb Space Telescopes will observe it. We'll see if that predicted gas cloud exists. We'll measure actual mass loss. We'll watch for any changes in the acceleration pattern. We'll search for radio emissions, infrared anomalies, or any other unusual signatures. On March 16, 2026, 3i Atlas will make one final close approach, passing within 33.5 million miles of Jupiter. NASA's Juno spacecraft orbiting Jupiter might capture a last image before the object accelerates back into interstellar space, never to return. Most astronomers believe 3i Atlas is a natural object, 
just one formed under very different conditions than solar system comets. Loeb and some colleagues argue the data is unusual enough to investigate all possibilities without dismissing them prematurely. The cumulative probability of all the observed anomalies occurring together by random chance, according to Loeb's analysis, is extraordinarily low, less than 1 in 10 quadrillion. Whatever 3i Atlas turns out to be, it's teaching us something important. Our models don't explain everything. The universe is more diverse and stranger than our theories predict. Sometimes something arrives that doesn't fit our categories, and we have to expand our thinking. Maybe it's a comet with exotic chemistry from a stellar system very different from ours. Maybe it's a new class of object that will revolutionize our understanding of how planetary systems form and evolve. Or maybe it's something that will challenge our fundamental assumptions about what's possible. The observations happening right now will give us answers, and those answers, whatever they turn out to be, will be fascinating. If you found this fascinating, hit that like button and subscribe to stay updated as this story develops. Drop a comment with your take on what's causing 3i Atlas's acceleration, and share this with anyone who'd be interested in this mystery. The more people paying attention, the better. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.